Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to use an Imperial Dial Caliper. Most people prefer digital calipers because they're easier to read, but dial calipers don't need any batteries so they don't die. Uh, so first of all, calipers have three different types of measuring devices. It has outer uh, external uh, measurements right here for these two jaws, and this is how you use them. They clamp inwards. These two jaws here are for uh, internal measurements, and they clamp outwards like so. And finally, at the end of the caliper, you have a depth gauge which can be used for measuring the depth of holes by extending the caliper, like so. Before I begin to show you how to take and interpret measurements on this type of caliper, it's important to first make sure that it's calibrated and that the measuring surfaces are clean. Um, because sometimes uh, dirt, dust, and grime could get accumulated between the jaws, and that could throw off your measurements. So you want to make sure that you're wiping your jaws down before you take a measurement, so that you remove any of that excess debris. After you've cleaned out your measuring surfaces, you can now start calibrating your caliper. So how you do this is basically just close the jaws. And the needle should rest directly above the zero, but as you can see here, it's off. So what I do is just loosen this knob down here by turning counterclockwise. This allows me to rotate the dial. I put the zero directly underneath the needle. Then I could tighten it again by turning clockwise. And then I just test it by opening and closing. And you can see the needle is directly above the zero. So that is how you calibrate the caliper. So once your caliper is calibrated, you can now start taking measurements. So when you go to measure a part, there are some things you have to um, consider. First of all, is make sure that the part is perpendicular or square to the caliper. If it's not square and the caliper is sort of skewed, that will throw off your measurement. Also, when you go to take a measurement, don't over tighten the jaws. Just make sure they're firmly set against the part. If you press too hard, that will put unnecessary stress on the internal mechanisms, and it will also throw off your measurement. Finally, when you go to take a measurement, you don't necessarily have to keep the part inside the jaws. You could take your measurement, and then use this knob up top here to lock the, the carriage into place. So once you take your measurement, you could just slide this out, and to prevent your measurement from... Um, Moving around, you turn this clockwise, and that will lock the carriage into place. So even though if I try to physically move this carriage, it can't. So that will preserve your measurement from any knocks or bumps or vibration. So once you've configured your caliper, you can now start taking and interpreting your measurements. So for this imperial caliper, there's a scale on this beam here, and there's an, a dial a scale right here. So on this scale right here, you're going to find your tenth of an inch and your whole inch increments right here. These largest numbers, one and two, that's your whole inch, and your ten of these smaller increments, so that will be your tenth of an inch. On the dial here, you're going to find your hundredths and thousandths of an inch. These double digits represent your hundredths, and these smaller increments in between represent your thousandths, since there are ten of these increments between every hundredth. So, you're going to find that as this caliper slides, to get from one tenth of an inch to another, this needle will make one whole revolution. So right now we're at absolute zero, 0, 0.000. To get to 0 0.1, which is the next uh, tenth of an inch, I could slide this and you could see that to get to, for the one to appear on the slide of the caliper, I have to make one complete revolution to get to 0 0.1. To get to 0 0.2, I make another complete revolution and so on. So for the first example, I set this measurement to a random distance apart, and we're going to measure it now. So first of all, you have to read whatever the highest numbers in each place are indicated by the, both the scale and this dial. So you can see the highest whole inch that is indicated is the 2. The highest tenth of an inch that is indicated is the 5. So this measurement will be, so far, will be 2.5. So we'll write that down here. Always remember where your decimal place is. So now we need our hundreds and our thousands inch place. For that, we go to our dial. You could see that the number that is indicated by the needle here is also 25, because the needle is halfway between 20 and 30, and it rests directly over that halfway mark. So it would be, if you want to be, you know, precise about it, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and that's where the needle rests upon. So 25 would be two would be your hundreds place and five will be your thousands place. Okay, so for our next example, we do the same thing. The highest inch readout is three. We'll write that down here. 
Now we need our 10th of an inch place. And you can see here that it looks like it might be the 3. However, um, this is a mistake. Uh, it would be a mistake if you counted that in your measurement because you can't see the line after the 3. You only see the number. So while the number th 3 is visible, if the line after it is not visible, you can't count it in your measurement. So we know that the measurement will actually be in somewhere in between 2.2 .2 and 2.3. So 2 would be the 10th uh, measurement that we would write down. 3.2. To figure out where exactly the measurement lies in between the 0.2 and the 0.3, we look to our dial. You can see that the number indicated by the needle here is 65, since it's on the fifth increment after the 60. So 3.265. Alright, so for our third example, I set another random uh, measurement here. One last time, the highest inch readout is 1. The highest tenth of an inch would not be the 8, even though it's partially visible. We wouldn't count it, because obviously you can't see the line after the 8, so you would count the 7. So it would be 1.7. Write that down here. And now we need our hundreds and thousands, so for that we look to whatever number that the needle is indicating. In this case, it would be the 54, since it's on the fourth increment after the 50. So 1.754. Now, of course, when you take your measurements, don't forget your units. So you could either do like the double dash like that, or just write inches. So never forget whatever um, measurement system you're working with. Always make sure you write down your units. Alrighty, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for another video on how to read imperial vernier micrometers.